Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about the uh, hypothalamus and the limbic system. It's about the drive and emotions. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the function, the component of the limbic system, and describe the anatomical feature, the location, the organization, and uh, the uh, yeah afferent efferent fibers and also uh, discuss the um, uh, major pathways and also the clinical considerations for the limbic system uh, so first let's just uh, talk about a big idea of the uh, limbic system the limit the limbic system it's um we shared by all mammals and uh, which located in the center of your brain and this um, uh, limbic system are enclosed by the cerebral cortex it's more regional uh, cerebral cortex but this limbic system is um, um, to concern with this feeling this emotions this uh, drive related behaviors and which is important for the survival of the species this limbic system is um, uh, responsible for avoid pain and repeat pleasure and um, this uh, uh, sensory stimuli that uh, elicit the the uh, emotional responses also elicit the autonomic responses and the conscious and also this uh, intentional response to help you uh, better understand the limbic system and there's a useful model for our brain and uh, that is a uh, triunion uh, brain so if you look at this picture then you can see the top part is brain and you have this um, cerebellum the brainstem and you can see in the center you have this uh, reptil uh, reptilian uh, com complex these include the brainstem the basal ganglion the hypothalamus these are like related to survival is more old part of your of your uh, brain and then the, you have this uh, uh, pillow mammalian uh, complex these uh, these uh, complex is include this limbic system and uh, it's an old mammalian part and it's uh, about this emotion this memory social bonding uh, things and then you have this new mammalian complex in the uh, superficial layer so this part is a new cortex it includes all the cerebral cortex uh, cerebellum neural cortex and this area is responsible for the uh, uh, relationalization, the creative, uh, this reasoning, this empathy, concern things. So um, this model uh, developed uh, in 1960s, and uh, this is a very useful as a philosophy to uh, help you understand how our whole brain works so as we already talked about this limbic system is responsible for this uh, emotion drive and memories so emotion uh, the emotion it's um, it's a, uh, a short-term uh, subjective experience like when you see a snake you fear you fear and when you see uh, candy you like it you feel happy and uh, the uh, drive means this uh, primitive um, survival urge like when you hungry if you're hungry you want to eat and if you're thirsty you, you want to drink and uh, the aggression or fight or flight this uh, 
uh, sex. Um, this uh, uh, all include in drive. So the limbic system actually in the center of your brain, and uh, it includes uh, agreement, some green matter and white matter. So limbic limbus means border. So it um, it's it border between the diencephalon and the new the cerebral cortex, new cortex. And uh, the uh, limbic uh, system also like functional, like a function border, which um, which uh, uh, like located between the new the non-conscious and the conscious area of the brain. So the limbic system actually is a link that between the more rational rational uh, neocortex and uh, our very basic autonomic response to the to the uh, environment so our limbic system will combine like uh, link all our emotion drive and memories and then uh, send it to our um, new cortex and it will our new cortex will integrate the it to our voluntary and involuntary actions. So uh, for the uh, uh, primary uh, structure of the limbic system, different textbook may have slightly different. Uh, but in our uh, textbook, this um, uh, limbic system include this hypothalamus, which located in the diencephalon, and then you have this uh, olfactory structures for your smell, and then you have the hippocampus, which located in the uh, temple um, temporal lobe, and then you have the amygdala, and uh, you have this limbic lobe, that is the cingulate gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus. This is another picture shows you the limbic system. And uh, uh, you can see the anterior side, you have this olfactory bulb, you have this amygdala, hippocampus, and you have the singular cortex. The limbic system include uh, the gray matters and white matters. Uh, so the associated uh, cortex include this cingulate gyrus, this uh, parahippocampus gyrus, the uh, the uh, medial orbital uh, frontal cortex, which I indicate in this. Uh, uh, picture below, and you have this temple bulb that means the and most anterior part of the temple lobe, and you have this insula, the anterior insula. So the primary function of the limbic system. Um, so I give you a picture, uh, uh, shows you uh, easy way to remember it. So because there's um, uh, limbic system have the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is um, have more re relationship with this uh, um, internal homeostasis. So it's a balance uh, inside of a body. The olfactory structures is a uh, relation for our smell, the olfaction, and the hippocampus is how more relationship with memories. So uh, the amygdala is uh, for emotion. So your fear, your uh, scare, your happy uh, uh, will be relationship with the amygdala. And uh, the limbic lobe, or the um, cingulate gyrus, the hippocamp, uh, the parahippocamp, Compass uh, will have this executive function. So, if you remember this, uh, if you uh, use this uh, first letter, that will be the 
homie, homie. So first, a hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, uh, you can see from the uh, uh, red picture, these hypothalamus have a lot of uh, nucleus. Uh, these nucleus are labeled in colors, so that we call it hypothalamic nucleus. And you have um, um, un like below this nucleus, you can have this uh, a pair of these uh, mammillary bodies. And uh, anterior to the mammillary body, you have this infundibular stalk that is uh, infundibular. As a function for this hypothalamus, we talk about this homeostasis. So this is a, a master control. So even this area is very small, but it's very important. So these uh, hypothalamus will like um, secrete uh, a lot of uh, hormones and uh, have uh, the uh, relationship with this uh, body's physiological process and this internal environment are uh, maintained at a very uh, in, uh, optimal level uh, controlled by these hypothalamus. So the physiological process and internal state gets uh, controlled, maintained by the Hypothalamus uh, can include like body temperature, uh, the uh, metabolic rate, or like this uh, defensive behaviors, or like growth, sleep. They all controlled by or uh, modulated by this uh, hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus uh, maintain this uh, homeostasis by like influence two uh, systems. One is the endocrine system. They secrete a lot of uh, these important hormones and control this endocrine system. Uh, and another way is to um, to influence this uh, homeostasis by control this autonomic nerve system. Uh, the other system. Uh, uh, integrated can have this somatic system or limbic system. They all got involved in this uh, this uh, processing. So how this hypothalamus have this effect on the endocrine system? That's because of very small but important gland, the pituitary gland. Because this uh, pituitary gland is a master gland. We call it master gland. Uh, in this whole endocrine system, these uh, pituitary uh, gland can like releasing the hormones that can regulate the other hormones in in the body, and uh, um, the uh, hypothalamus is the one who control this king. So it's. Uh, this uh, hypothalamus affect this whole endocrine system through the pituitary gland. If you look at the picture in the right side, you can see the uh, pituitary gland are divided into anterior lobe and posterior lobe. So the anterior lobe, it's uh, like uh, most of the hormones come from here. The posterior lobe, as we, we call this part, is neural uh, hypophysis. It's uh, the extension of a hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus mm, uh, connects this uh, pituitary gland uh, through this uh, infundibular stalk. And uh, uh, the hypothalamus also, also it's the controller or the master of this uh, autonomic nerve system. You remember we talk about this uh, autonomic system. 
uh, this uh, anterior hypothalamus uh, is uh, they project the pathway to the parasympathetic nerve system. The posterior hypothalamus will uh, project the pathway to the sympathetic nerve system. Here's just a review uh, for the uh, uh, autonomic uh, nerve system. So that you remember, if you remember this uh, sympathetic uh, nerve system are all about fight or flight or run away. So it can, in, when you see a dangerous things, you respond with increasing your blood pressure, increase the heart rate, or increase the sugar level to prepare for, 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 for fight. And at the center of this uh, sympathetic uh, nervous system is the thoracolumbar region uh, of the spinal cord. The parasympathetic uh, nervous system are uh, about this rest or digest. It's uh, just uh, um, for your body to save energy, to reserve, restore your energy for the homostasis. So uh, it can increase blood flow to your skin or to your uh, uh, GI tract and for digest and can decrease the heart rate and blood pressure. Uh, this, the center of these uh, nerves are in the cranial part and the sacral region. So we call it cranial sacral region. So if the patient have any uh, uh, impairment for the hypothalamus, um, it could damage or uh, disrupt the patient's uh, homostasis, internal homostasis. It can have a uh, um, change of this uh, body temperature, heart rate, or like level of hunger. Uh, patient may have um, uh, change on the level of activities. People can be um, uh, very depressed or like easy to uh, be angry. The second part of this uh, limbic system is the olfactory structure. So the olfactory uh, uh, structure uh, is responsible for the affection and it um, it's composed by the olfactory bulb, the olfactory tract posted to it, and then this uh, information will be sent uh, from the uh, olfactory tract to the primary olfactory cortex, which located in the anterior tip or uh, the medial anterior pole of the temporal lobe, which is very close to the amygdala. Remember the amygdala is um, dealing with this emotion and memory. So this um, uh, olfactory will be sent or integrate with this emotion and memories. So uh, there's an effect, we call this uh, Proust effect that was defined uh, as like an involuntary sensory induced vivid and emotion relieving of event from the past. So it can be, you, you may uh, simply think like, remember a very vivid picture or uh, a scent uh, just because you smiled a very familiar smell. Uh, this is very important for uh, human or animals like uh, because you know mo some of a lot of these mammals have very very sensitive olfactory uh, olfactory organs in the like mouse uh, they can uh, like uh, recognize a danger uh, a danger things just uh, because 
then smell this, and then they can prepare for the danger environment. The third part will be the hippocampus. This hippocampus uh, means seahorse because these part is uh, looks like a seahorse, and uh, uh, this uh, um, hippocampus located. If you see the picture in the right side, it's located in the uh, limbic lobe, and uh, uh, or in some textbook, they call it located in the temporal lobe because it's in the middle side. And uh, it uh, just lie very deep in the pyrohippocampus gyrus. And the function of this uh, area is um, convert the short memory, term the memory to a long term memory. So this uh, hippocampus uh, can be further uh, divided into three parts, like the dentate gyrus, a curved area of the cortex, and uh, the cubiculum. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, hippocampus, uh, they receive uh, the uh, fibers from the septum, from the hypothalamus, and the uh, into hino cortex and then send this out um, through this phonix and then uh, get involved in this uh, uh, this uh, keeping the short term memory to the long term memory and uh, uh, also this uh, spatial awareness and the cortical uh, steroid projections the uh, into hino uh, cortex is located in the middle temporal lobe and is very close to the uh, hippocampus and uh, the, it is the main inter in this connection between the hippocampus and the uh, neural cortex so uh, the uh, uh, into hino cortex uh, get a lot of input from this uh, primary olfactory cortex from the uh, sing uh, posterior singular gyrus and also this um, anterior and posterior multiple associated area and also the uh, uh, input from this uh, orbital frontal cortex and also the uh, septal area from the amyg amygdala. Um, so the septal area is a great matter. Uh, you can see I labeled it with a red circle here, which is located in the anterior, anterior side of this anterior commissure, which separate this, um, the uh, left and right lateral ventricles. This uh, septal area are thought to be the self reward center and uh, um, you stimulate this area, you will feel feel good. So there's an experiment uh, which uh, the uh, scientists have put an uh, electrical code here, and then the uh, mouse can stimulate this area by pressing a bar. And then the mouse are very like to, to press it and even just want to get a good feeling and you forgot to 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 eat yeah. so uh, scientists think uh, this uh, this may link to the feeling of uh, euphoria so being stimulated by like uh, narcotics or runner's high so the interhinal cortex and the phonics uh, are the uh, primary out output of the hippocampus. And you can see I uh, label the phonics and the uh, interhinal uh, cortex with red, uh, with red um, arrow and the circle. Mm. And the uh, uh, phonics actually it's a white matter. 
and this white matter uh, that extend this um, uh, hippocampus uh, to this um, uh, amygdala. Amygdala is a, well, one part of this limbic system, and this amygdala just located anterior to the uh, hippocampus, uh, which located in the medial temporal pole, and uh, it's an uh, almond-shaped uh, uh, nucleus. So uh, these, uh, the function of this amygdala is to connect this uh, perception of the object with uh, the uh, uh, appropriate emotional response. So uh, this uh, emotion could be like fear, anxiety, aggressive, aggra ag aggression, or maybe interpret uh, facial expression, body language, and these are very important for the emotional learning and in empathy. The output of the amygdala can send to cortex, like prefrontal cortex, to to help have this uh, temper decision, and uh, uh, to send to the limbic system for the emotional awareness, and uh, can uh, send to the sensory cortex, and uh, uh, output can send to the uh, basal ganglia for motor responses and uh, can send to the hypothalamus and brainstem for this um, uh, autonomic uh, system and the subcortical sub responses, which are appropriate to these uh, emotions. So uh, if uh, uh, there's laron uh, on amygdala, will lead to some um, like social phobia, addiction, hypersexuality, uh, like overeating, undereating, and uh, uh, stimulation to this amygdala can produce uh, some uh, varying emotions, but most of, most of them are often like, can lead to a fear feeling. And people with autism can have more volume of uh, amygdala, and people with um, PTSD, also have uh, this increased sized amygdala. And uh, uh, if you have bilateral lesion for the amygdala, uh, which can uh, impair the, the emotional memories. Uh, the, five, uh, the fifth part of the uh, limbic system is the limbic lobe, which include the cingulate gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus. So the cingulate gyrus, uh, which have a lot of uh, connection with this um, uh, parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe, these uh, will connect this uh, mm, other part of the limbic system to the different area of our brain, of our cerebral cortex. These uh, will help for this uh, decision making which uh, responds to the uh, sensory data. The parahippocampus gyrus, uh, which uh, was labeled in this picture in, in green, um, this area will compare uh, the present to our past memories because it's located to the uh, parahippocampus, right? So its relationship with memories and but it will compare these memories and for this uh, decision making. So there are some points that you need to be clear that limbic lobe is different from limbic system. So different limbic lobe is only include this um, uh, cingulate gyrus and uh, paras hippocampus gyrus. Uh, the limbic system is include whole whole bunch of these stru structures. Uh, and uh, the limbic system is uh, composed of all of these structures and the cortex and other white matter, white matters. And these um, comprise the emotion and drive-related brain. 
but the limbic lobe is only one part of this limbic system.